today we are going to solve this stored xss lab previous video we have seen how reflected xss work and how we can solve the reflected xss lab what is reflected xss if you are not familiar with this you you should to definitely check my previous video this video is going to be for the specific for stored xss into html context with nothing encoded so first of all if you guys are not familiar with stored xss what is stored xss so here is the short intro of the stored xss vulnerability Stored XSS vulnerability, also known as stored cross-site scripting, also known as a second order or persistent second order or persistent XSS, arises when an application receives data from untrusted source. Untrusted source mean like DOM of this website, for example, a place where where a user can comment. For example, here in this request, you can see that here is an application making a post request to the endpoint slash post slash comment. But here you can see at this comment argument. There is going to be data which is called this post was extremely helpful. Okay. A simple user and a victim or an innocent user uses this and post the comment like this post was extremely helpful. But what if what if this feature has been uh, you know exposed to an attacker who is a really skillful hacker and who knows how to manipulate these input boxes and instead of typing this post was extremely helpful, the attacker can inject crypt tag and bad stuff here. You can see that he he can craft a malicious payload like script JavaScript and can execute the JavaScript. If this is not going to be sanitized properly, so if the application is storing the script tag as it is without HTML or other sanitization so this is going to be a stored cross-site scripting stored cross-site scripting means when an application receives data from an untrusted source and includes that data within its latter http responses in an unsafe way this means that when a particular malicious javascript code has been saved into a database whenever other user which is publicly available for example comments are publicly available if you are not they are publicly available for example uh, you see that you are posting a Facebook picture and there is a lot of comments from the public people so in social media we have seen many more but the thing is in these comments can be malicious these comments can be JavaScript and uh, JavaScript payloads if they are not sanitized properly so within the attacker request this comment would be the URL encoded here you can see this uh, this is the payload and here it is the form of URL encoded form of the payload JavaScript payload this is gonna work if the application is not properly sanitizing these so today our agenda is that we can solve the lab which is not sanitizing you know context with nothing encoded okay with nothing encoded we are not going to encode any any you know specific encodation for the firewall bypass because there are many there are many many firewalls out there in this uh, industry so firewalls usually block these words such as alert so we are going to check this lab first we are going to read uh, read about this this lab contains a stored cross-site scripting vulnerability in the comment functionalities to solve the lab submit a comment that calls the alert function when the blog post is viewed this is i am assuming this blog post having a feature like uh, comment box or any other thing so we are going to manipulate this let's see what what is inside the lab we are going to open this if you haven't created uh, your account with portswagger.net so you have to make sure to create your account you are going to open this lab and perform this with free free of cost there is no no single penny is going to be charged okay so first of all what we are going to do we are going to click on this view post button so here is an awesome functionality this is for example a blog post which is written by a blogger and here is a here is a comment feature we are trying we are going to try to manipulate this so what we are going to do first we are going to type test in the name section we are going to also give the test and email section we are going to use test at the right test.com and the website would be http as attacker.com whatever the website would be we are going to post comment this okay post this comment okay thank you for your comment your comment has been submitted back to blog while backing to the blog so you can see that our comment has been saved in the database and it is now publicly av available so anybody can access this as you are seeing that the page turner also has commented like i was an engrossed in this blog has started squeezing my cat very tightly so what we are going to see what we are going to do is we are going to do a check 
and this dom code so here is the dom code so you can see that this is basically using you know a test using a paragraph tag and inside paragraph tag here is our input so our input is being stored inside a paragraph tag now we are going to use a payload for example script which is a basic payload which most time most of the time is being filtered by by any website for example here i am going to use alert and xss after it this we are going to use now here i am going to post this my malicious payload again now here we are going to use the name attacker and here i am going to use sfd at the red gmail.com https hacker.com here we are again going to post our comment back to blog now what we are going to see this just the greater than sign and the comma is remaining but the other part of our payload has been sanitized properly so here you can see that our payload has not been sanitized okay but the alert and xss pop-up is not executing anyway we are seeing that our script alert xss is as it is present inside this dom so the other thing would try to use the advanced payloads which we are going to take from this uh, amazing payload all the thing on github here is an amazing awesome payloads available for xss vulnerability you can check it check all of these one by one but here i am going to choose specifically xss vulnerability i am going to quickly search xss yeah here xss injection here we are inside these really awesome payload but we are going to oh, we are going to use some advanced payload from these lists like script debugger and image document here is also a good this is also a good payload but we are going to use another one these payloads can work everywhere because these are not sanitizing this here uh, this feature is not sanitizing our payload so this is the problem so here we are going to use svg slash onload alert xss this is most advanced payload uh, currently used uh, being used in our industry hacker industry so i am going to again take the email as same as we have already given and trying to post this and here you can see this congregation we have solved the lab because this payload is very much advanced svg svg is basically a, a form of image embedding you know this svg mean svg stands for scalable vector graphic and defines vector based graphics in xml format okay this is mostly you used a payload in this uh, bug bounty space so you can try to save this payload as well because this is gonna work as uh, stored access as well so i hope you have learned something new by solving this lab here we have when we are going to come back to our this uh, page of this post so you can see that the xss pop-up is here here is our majestic xss pop-up so whenever we are going to reload this we are going to receive this because this is a cro stored cross-site scripting stored cross-site scripting as usual critical as usual is critical or as high in this in as impact if you found this one you are lucky because you have found a lucrative bug inside an application so definitely if uh, the program will be and will have any bounty you can get the bounty hope you have enjoyed this series of solving these labs of client side vulnerabilities i will make another video and also make sure to subscribe if you learn something new and please share this my payload please share this my playlist to other friends